Hey guys, just a really quick intro to say if you enjoy this video and you're a complete beginner, perhaps you can come and check out my full DJ course on beginnerdjlessons.com. There'll be a link under this video. Hi guys. Okay, so I wanted to start off with the absolute basics, which is the program that I use to help me DJ. So this program is called Serato DJ. You can just Google that and you'll be able to download this program for free. Um, now, I have to explain, this course is mainly about digital DJing. Although I do know you can use Serato with vinyl. I'm not sure if many people do though. Um, and also if you're using DDJs, uh, you don't have to actually use Serato. You can just do it with the little screens that come on the actual DJ decks. But you still can plug Serato into most digital DJ decks. Um, I also have to explain that Serato is not the only program. There are other programs out there. It's just the one that I learned how to DJ on. Um, I find it really easy and straightforward to use. It's free and even if you don't use this program, the things I'm going to teach you in this series are so simple they will be able to be applied to all different programs. So I'm going to give you a quick run through Serato, but you'll probably find on whatever program you use, it will have the exact same setup as this. Um, so, and one last thing I want to say is, well, I'm, I'm not going to go into too much detail, I'm just going to teach you the very basic stuff you need to know. And honestly, with DJing, the basic stuff is 90% of it. And then the last extra bits are really if you want to get really technical. And honestly, it's best to keep things simple. So when you first open up Serato, it's going to look like this. These show four different decks. So you can have four different decks, actual DJ decks, if you've got the DDJ decks. But or if you have the same decks as mine, which is these ones here, the DDJ SX2, um, you can actually have buttons here which will shift from one deck to another deck, and then there's another one here from one deck to another deck. So you can actually have four tracks lined up if you wanted to. But again, I have to tell you, I never do this. I always have one deck here with music on and one deck here with music on and it's so much simpler so I'd recommend only ever having two decks this side and this side running music and not having additional decks because it really overcomplicates things and this is a beginner's course so you'll click this button to take it down to just two decks now when you add music you need to do this you add a folder you can dub double click in it and then call it whatever you want so songs then what you do is you will bring in your own music so let me just open up this and show you what I'm talking about if you now I'm on a Mac and I'm again I'm sure this will work exactly the same way if you did this with a PC you can literally take songs and you just drag and drop into that file okay so then you'll have this file here and again you can add another file if you want so if you you can make as many files as you want so you can sort your songs into bpms which is beat per minute which is how fast the track is or you can sort it by genre or you can do whatever you want really but that's how you do it so you can add as many as you want and the other thing you might need to know is you can drag crates they're called crates, but they're basically folders. You can drag the crates inside each other. So if you said, these are all my hip hop songs, and then you could open it up and you could have different sub crates or sub folders with all the different genres of hip hop within that. Okay. Now, if you want to de delete these folders, you can just hit backspace. Uh, sorry, you can't hit backspace and they've done that specially so you don't easily remove a whole crate. You have to hit command and backspace to delete it. Um, so that's how you add songs. And the only other thing I need to explain to you here is this song is not now loaded onto Serato. This is just linked to the file that you just dragged it in from. So this 
Serato now knows to find this file, it needs to go here. So if I was to go to this song and remove it, it would no longer be on Serato. So you can't just drag all your favourite songs into Serato, then delete them and expect them to be there. They are just being played through Serato and located from wherever you drop them. And I have a special, this isn't actually it, but I have a special... Um, memory card that I have all my music on. This one isn't actually it though. Okay, so that's adding songs. Um, okay, so the next thing I need to tell you is, uh, let me have a look at my list. So the next thing I need to explain is my DJ decks, which again, I'll bring back up, which are these ones. This, all this device here does is control this program. So everything I'm doing on this, only works because it's controlling things that happen on this program and with most digital DJ decks they will work a bit like that um, so that's one thing you need to know so if I hit play on here all this is doing is telling this program to hit play so that's something else I need to explain to people is this program is really doing all the actual work and the DJ Dex is just a MIDI controller, which means it just controls what's going on in Serato. Okay, so I've explained all of that. So, um, the next thing I want to explain is what I will be doing when I'm DJing. So, I will look down the list to find a song that I like and I'll drag it into the relevant deck. So if I drag it up into here, the song loads here, which will load it into this space. Or if I drag it up here, it loads it into this space here. Okay. And I'm actually going to load one of the track in, which is this one here, DJ course, drum track. And I'm just going to drag that into there. So, you can have one track here that plays and then one track here lined up to play. So that's all you really need to know from Serato. And the other thing you need to know is when you hit play, the one track will move at the top. And if you hit play on the second track, and by the way, all I'm doing here is hitting this button here on the left to make the left hand track play or I hit this button here, which is play on the right hand deck to make the right hand play. So I've hit the right hand play, that happens. Okay, so the other things that I do want to explain really quickly is the color system, which will help you at certain points. So all you need to know is Actually guys, I'm gonna just change something quickly. So if you come up here and click extended, this is actually a much easier view. So basically this is the track up here and then this is this track here. And this comes in quite handy when you're actually DJing because you can see more of the track and it helps with lining up beats, which again will be explained more in later detail in later videos. Okay, now I did wanna explain something with the colouring system here. So red colour usually signifies it's quite bassy, it's quite a bassy area. And then green is more of a, uh, it's not such a bassy colour. And that's basically all you need to know. You'll also see this track here is just a five minutes of one beat, which I've created to help with the beat matching. Um, which I'm going to explain later on. So this isn't actually a very good example. But as you can see with this track I've dragged in up here, you can see the full track is here and you can see where it builds up here to a drop and then you can see where it's red there where there's another drop and then the drop fades out and then you can see it builds up in green to another drop over here. Purple and reds usually signify deeper parts of the song and green is usually lighter parts of the song which aren't so bass heavy. So that means that at a glance you can quickly work out where the drop of a song is or where the main part of the song is which is going to be the main dance bit which is going to be the bassiest bit of the song and where the other bits aren't. 
So it's just relevant to bear that in mind, the color system here, just to help you at a glance work out where you are with the track. Um, the other thing you need to know is, and you wouldn't want to do this while the track was playing, but let's say this track here was playing, and you, were, you wanted to queue up this song here, you can actually move this to the part of the song you want to start playing and then you can queue it up um, and I explained queuing in the first video but I will explain in a bit more detail in a moment so as I explained in the first video where you can put your finger on the trackpad at the top you can also do the same by just clicking on the song and dragging it along here or clicking to a certain point so clicking here will have the exact same effect as putting your finger on the trackpad, which is this bit here, which I explained in the first video. Moving that along is the same thing as moving your mouse along in this video. Okay, so that's the kind of visuals of the song explained. Um, now, in terms of skipping forward on a track, there's two ways to do it. The one is the one I just explained, which is moving your, finger, your mouse cursor along here which will really quickly get to a certain point of the song or you can actually drag directly on this song and line it up exactly how you want it to where you want it to be now I have to tell you these two things I never do in Serato I use my DJ decks to do this and I will be explaining that in a few in another video um, but I just wanted to let you know you can move the track along and as you can hear when you drag it over, you can actually hear it. So if I put the... Which kind of has that classic scratching effect. But again, you would never do that on the computer. Um, okay, so... One other thing I wanted to explain was, as I explained in the first video, you can cue a song by pressing this button here. So you'll go to a certain point of a song, by literally doing this, dragging to the point you want it to be, get it to the exact point, and then you can click the Q button, which is right here, that Q button there. And I, th yeah, okay. Um, now I never actually use this Q button because I've got these DJ decks. I actually use these buttons here, which are also they also act as Q buttons and the colors on these relate to the colors which are here so for example if I dragged it to this point and I'm on this track here if I dragged it to this point here and I said I want it at the beginning of there I can add a Q point point by just clicking that button there and then that turns red now again, I'm going to show you this in another video, but that will then turn red to signify that that button there will instantly play the track from that point. So hitting and holding that button will have the same effect as me pressing play on it on this screen here. So let me turn this up so you can hear it. And then you take your finger off and it stops again. So that's queuing, and you can add as many cue points as you want. So you might say, I want another cue point there, I want another cue point there, and so on. And again, I have to tell you, I never do this inside the program. I always use my DJ decks to do this, which again, I will explain in another video. But I just wanted to explain that when you add these cue points, they're also adding them on this program here. So you can have different points of the song ready to go. And they'll save them there as well. So if you go to a different track and you slide this one in and then you go back to the original track, you'll see those cue points are there for another time you go back to do some DJing. Those same points will still be there. Okay, so um, that's something else. Now, I've kind of explained to you 99% of what I ever actually do within this program, but just a couple of other quick basics. When you play a track, this number here will tell you the beats per minute, which is how fast the track is. This number here will tell you how far into the track you are, so 1 minute 11, 12, 
13 and you've probably already guessed this number here will tell you the countdown of how long you've got left so if you've had it here you can see there's only 13 12 11 seconds left to the end of the song and that's quite useful to be honest with you i always use this to see so for example if i put this here and press play you can see that's moving along so when i'm actually djing if i want to see how long left of the song i've got I'll instantly look at this visual cue of the white marker moving along before I look at how many seconds I've got left down here. So this is the white marker I'd look at if I wanted to know how long I had left of the song. Um, and then the only other two things I did want to mention is, as I mentioned in my first video, these buttons along the top are different effects that you can add in by increasing the knob or decreasing the knob. So for example, if it was a reverb effect, you can turn this up and more and more reverb will come onto the song and then you can turn it down again. You can change what effects are on these buttons through Serato. So when you click effects, it'll drop down and you can see that these drop downs here will correlate perfectly to this, this and this. So you can say on the first one here, I want there to be an echo. On the second one, I want there to be a flanger effect. On the third, I want there to be a pan delay. And you can, just say, you can say whatever effects you want. And then when you turn those knobs, you'll see that they'll also show on the screen as well, which again means you can click it and move it up and down on the screen there. Again, I would never really do this in the program, but it is quite useful for deciding what effects you want on those knobs. And again, I'm sure this will apply to all DJ programs. And once you've done, you don't want it to take up too much of the screen, so you can just close it again afterwards. And the final thing I wanted to mention about Serato is you can record your DJ set. So if you click this record button here, um, you have to go into setup and preferences to say where you want this to be recorded to. So you might record it to your desktop or you might record it to your hard drive or wherever you want to record it. But as soon as you hit this, it will start recording. Oh, you have to hit this. And then as soon as you, oh, here's the record location. So you can click that and it'll take you to select what location you want to record it to and as soon as you hit this record button that timer will start counting and whatever dj set you record will be recorded so i have done this quite a lot if you want to do a mix of all your favorite songs to go to the gym or to go on a run or something like that you can hit record record a 30 minute set of all your favorite music and then stop by hitting the record button again then you can go to this location and you can listen to your entire track or you can upload it to mix cloud or you can send it to your friends or whatever um, okay so this is the absolute basics of serato and to be honest with you even though it's the basics it's most of it um, that's 90 percent of what i use this program for one last thing that might be handy for you is there's a history of all the dj sets you've done here now this is a brand new program here um, so i haven't got a history oh well i have i've got the history of today so you can see tonight or today, you can see there's all the songs I've played and in order. Um, so it means if I was to do another DJ set tomorrow and I said I loved the DJ set I did yesterday, I can go through and pick out which songs went down really well. The other thing that some of you may have noticed as well is that once you've played a song, it'll turn blue and it'll show you that you've already played that song so if you're doing a DJ set you don't play the same song again or if you hand it over to a friend that friend knows okay he's already played these tracks not to play that same track but what you may want to do is go back at the beginning of every set and select these tracks and make sure that they're all white again so you can do this by just selecting them all and just going to clear and close history again and they're white again so again, I'll just show you, if I drop this in there and I hit play, it's now turned blue because it says that I've already played the track. Okay, 
So that's everything about Serato. Um, in the next video, I'm going to teach you the basics of beat matching. Uh, again, using this program. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video and you're interested in learning more, come and check out beginnerdjlessons.com. There'll be a link underneath this video where I've created a full eight-part tutorial series that'll teach you everything you need to know about DJing, right from the basics up to advanced mixing techniques and perfect beat matching. There'll be a link underneath this video.